Hi, everyone. This is Aaron. And this is James. And you are listening to the Colorado Real Estate Podcast, brought to you by Aaron and James Real Estate, where we talk about all things Colorado real estate. Hey, everybody. Happy Wednesday. We are posting on Wednesdays now. On today's podcast, we are going to talk about the fact that uh, a lot of new Las Vegas money is coming into Cripple Creek. There's a new big casino hotel and what that might mean for potential investment there. We're going to answer the question, what are the first steps to buying a home? And we are going to end by talking about Old World Bagel, which has a legitimate New York style deli and bagel shop in the middle of a strip mall, but still nonetheless. Gambling has been legalized in Colorado since 1990, and it's dominated Blackhawk, Central City, and Cripple Creek, but it hasn't been very attractive to Nevada or outside money because we have had a gaming cap at $5, and then we also have been very limited in the kind of games that we have allowed. Now, recently, because of sports betting, that picture has changed a little bit, as well as the state allowing for additional games and taking off that cap. So now we're starting to see Nevada-type money move into the state of Colorado. And the article I was reading was saying that Colorado had just cracked into the top 15 as far as gaming states, which didn't sound that impressive to me because I'm like, how many states can actually game? But maybe what is interesting about that is that we're on the rise and maybe just being in the top 15, maybe that whole picture is about to change. Nevertheless, a lot of money is going into Cripple Creek, Central City, and Blackhawk from outside interests that weren't interested in us before. Yeah, so specifically in Cripple Creek, and uh, we're interested in that because we are down in Colorado Springs and Cripple Creek is uh, 45 minutes to an hour south of us. Um, Cute little old mining town that didn't have a lot going on at all uh, until uh, ga- gaming was approved and they went into Cripple Creek. So there is a $250 million casino hotel the Camonix. Would that be how you pronounce that? I don't know. Chamonix. <laughs> uh, I, I took a stab at, at French there. Um, anyway, C H A M O N I X. Um, it's 300 rooms. It's, it's going to have the first luxury hotel rooms in Cripple Creek. It's going to more than double the hotel capacity of that town. It's going to have a rooftop pool, nicer hotels, and it's being brought to Cripple Creek by Full House Resorts, which is a Nevada-based, Las Vegas-based gaming company. Um, and I think Aaron's right. W- What's interesting to us as a as real estate agents and real estate agents who work with a lot of investors is when you see somebody who has big pockets see a uh, potential good investment in a town, well, they've done their homework. They know what the potential is and that should signal to smaller investors that, um, that there's opportunity there. Um, so I think that's really interesting. Um, there's also another property that's going to be turned into a golden nugget. I've never heard of golden nugget, but it sounds like it's a name. Um, and they're in Reno and Vegas as well. Um, so they came in and bought a different property. They're going to uh, a different like small casino in Cripple Creek. They're going to turn it into that. To James's point, I am most interested in this story because I think you always want to follow where the big money is because that says that they're going to develop it and there's going to be a potential in that area. They have done the analysis. Whenever people are asking me, like, what's the secret? Where would you invest? What would you do? It's like, it's not complicated. You follow where rich people are investing and you copy that. And so to the extent that you can, obviously you can't come in and have a casino, but you could buy a small property around that or buy land, buy land around that and it could become lucrative. So that is what's interesting to me. I think other things that were interesting about this was just how sports betting changed it. And also they're saying that we still, Colorado still is not necessarily positioned for the really big gaming communities to come in, but that we are going to be a very interesting and a very attractive place for gambling companies that are trying to prove or test out new ways to gamble or new positions in the market. And so they're saying, you know, it's an ideal proving ground for sports betting brands and disruptor style ambitions. So I think that's very interesting. And I like the fact that Colorado is kind of known for that as far as like a good place for startups to be. Something else to pay attention to is what's happening in Blackhawk and Central City. So there is a celebrity chef named Jet Tila who's 
bringing in um, a business and a restaurant. And so it's high end food. And then also they've added baccarat and some other things that I guess are very attractive to Asian communities. I can only speak to that so much, but it just seems like some people are coming in with some new ideas and that there are business interests that are excited about what is happening with gambling in Colorado. And I think you've already seen this in Blackhawk as well, where Monarch uh, just blew out their hotel. I don't know when that was, but um, if you've ever been to Blackhawk and gone to Monarch, it feels like a, a smaller version of a Las Vegas style uh, resort casino. Um, it's got everything you think you would want there, kind of nicer restaurants, crappy restaurants, the big buffet, um, the, the, two floors of gaming that are running 24 um, seven and really nice rooms with incredible views. I went up there and stayed with uh, some friends once. And, um, and I think whenever you see that coming in, you think, uh, you think there are good things coming behind it. And that's also what appears to be happening or about to happen in Cripple Creek. Yeah. I mean, Ameristar has, has existed in Blackhawk for some time and it hasn't had a lot of competition. It looks like they're going to add another high end, casino to that area and then also things are going to happen in central city but I would say ameristar is a ton of fun there's a pool lots of gambling if you're into gambling good food um, we don't do it a lot but when we do do it it's fun Hey guys, we wanted to let you know we are offering real estate consulting services now. The people that are using this would be, you know, agents that need a second opinion and or buyers or sellers that are part of a transaction or an investment and they just want someone that's not part of the deal to look it over and say, these assumptions are right or this situation is going well or it's not. We can also pull laws for you. We can look at your numbers and say, uh, short term, medium term or long term makes the most sense for your investment. We're happy to look at your listing, just a whole array of services that, again, we can provide for you as kind of like a second opinion or real estate therapy, if you will, um, for, again, people that that just want a second set of eyes. If you would like to schedule that, we're taking calls right now on Tuesdays and Fridays. You just need to email me at Aaron at Aaron and James real estate.com. All right. If you've listened to our podcast in recent weeks, we've talked about how it's kind of an interesting time in the market. It's not really a buyer's market per se. It's not a seller's market. Um, but if you are looking to buy, um, because there's slightly less competition than there was say a year ago, um, what are those first steps? What are the first steps to actually buying a home? That's what we're going to talk about today. Um, Aaron, what's the absolute first step you have to take? to buy a house. It is to talk to a lender. So you, you may already have a lender that you know about, or you may know someone that's bought and they'll have a lender that they can refer you to. And, or if you reach out to a real estate agent, they'll be able to tell you lenders that they work with regularly that they like. But the reason why the lender is the first step is because they'll qualify you and tell you how much money you can spend, which you then can share with the real estate agent. And then the real estate agent can craft a search for you around what you, you know, what your price point is and your threshold and and try and come up with a plan around that because you don't want to be going out and looking at houses that are outside of your payment range because then everything below that is not going to be as attractive. You're basically going to spoil the fun before you get even started. So it's smart to understand what you can buy first and then limit your search to that. Absolutely. Talking to a lender and finding out what you qualify informs everything about the search. So um, I think a real estate agent, any good one is probably not going to take you out before you have a pre-qualification or a pre-approval because um, it, it's kind of pointless. Um, now, if you've bought before and you already kind of know what you qualify for, that's a different beast. But we're talking about if you're a first-time home buyer and you really don't know. So um, get with a lender. Either talk to you know your friends and maybe they've worked with a lender in the past. Um, I always talk about the first steps actually being kind of 1A, 1B, and they could be almost interchangeable. And I think it's finding a lender, finding an agent. Uh, and I say they're interchangeable because uh, how do you find either one of them? And I think finding one of them can lead to the other. So we get asked all the time when people find us, like, do you have a good lender? And yes, we do. We have a couple great lenders who are responsive and professional and get the deals done. Um, and so I'm not really sure which one is the first one uh, to do. I think finding a good agent, it could also be your first step. Uh, but any any good agent's also then going to turn around and tell you, okay, you got to talk to this lender first. So And then we'll talk, basically. And then we'll talk. The other advantage of speaking to a lender 
well in advance is that they can help you tighten up your finances. So they'll do a review with you and say, if you do this or you do that, that will help. And I know I just did an interview that we'll post in the future with the lender that I primarily work with. And she was just talking about how people get very fixed on that price of a house, but really where she comes in sometimes is that she can say, well, if we, if you pay off this debt or you do this or that, then we can get your payment, your monthly payment to this. And that's probably what you care about more necessarily than the house payment. You are more concerned about your monthly mortgage payment. So I think a lender that knows what they're doing and can help you look at your financial picture is a real gift in this situation. I think also just having transparency and being proactive active. I think because a real estate decision and buying your first property is such a big deal, it's easy to put off or think I'll do it in the future, or it's just overwhelming and stressful and I don't want to deal with that. And so I think if you have a thought that it is serious and that you want to do it, it makes sense maybe to tell people in your orbit about it. Just like if you're trying to lose weight or if you're trying to cut out alcohol, there's going to be more social pressure if you make that announcement. And so that kind of drives it. And then also if you have another stakeholder, whether it's your spouse or it's going to be a parent that's going to help assist you or something else, just sitting down with them and saying, I really do want to do this. These are my concerns about the transaction. What are your concerns about the transaction? And then moving forward from there. I think a lot of buyers think, well, I don't know if I would qualify. And so I won't talk to a lender yet, or I don't want to waste their time. I'm not quite ready or I'm not quite sure when I will buy. Um, I don't think that's the right approach. I think if you think you're going to be buying anytime in the next year or so, you should talk to a lender now because that's their job. They they will talk to you for free. You do not have to pay them at all. Um, uh, at least not up front that you will pay them whenever you go under contract on a property. But to Aaron's point, they are so helpful in, 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 helping you to figure out what you can afford and being creative. I I don't like to use that word all the time because we get investors all the time that use creative as a euphemism for um, a screaming unicorn. Find me a unicorn that doesn't exist. Exactly. But they can get creative and they can work with you, uh, to, to maybe pay off debts that will help you get qualified. And they might very well tell you, no, actually you qualify just fine. So talk to a lender. That's uh, there really is. That is the first step. I think it's also a disservice to the buyer to use a national mortgage company. So they, the national mortgage companies will offer you the cheapest rate, but then you can never get a hold of someone. They are definitely not being creative or caring at all. I mean, that's just a big box business that is basically a templated intake and not much else. So I think for this kind of transaction, you're much better off using a local lender. Um, my other thought on this, and another concern that I hear from people is I don't want my credit run. Totally get that because when your credit's pulled, it's only good, I think, for 60 days. Um, three, three months, I thought. Is it or, three months? Well, it might have changed. It used to be three months. I still think it is three months. Let's check that. We'll check that. Anyways, uh, it is good for a set amount of time, whether that's two months or three months. But when you talk to a lender, they don't necessarily have to pull your credit. They can, when you get pre-qualified, that is based off of the information that you give them that they haven't double checked. When you get pre-approved, the lender is double checking the information that you've given them. That's when a credit is pulled. But as long as you're honest with the lender, they can pull everything and give you a very clear idea of your financial picture. Um, and that and and real estate agents will use that as a letter to go out. And then you can wait until you're ready to execute on a property to be fully qualified. Um, so don't think that your credit has to get pulled right off the bat. And damn it, it was three months. Yes. Sorry for cussing if there's a kid in the room. Uh, James is right. I'm wrong. Um, I would say to Aaron's earlier point about using a local lender versus a national lender, I read a stat recently that said that 43% of respondents of a survey think that buying a house is more stressful than getting a divorce. <laughs> Um, I, I don't know what kind of house buying experience they had or what kind of divorce they had, but that seems really off. Uh, but my point is that uh, a really good local lender will be there all the time. They they will hold your hand and and they're they're going to be comforting you. They're going to be uh, answering your calls and you want to be able to get a hold of them because you are stressed. You're not sure what the process is. Um, and to Aaron's point, Rocket Mortgage uh, is not going to pick up your call. Uh, they work Monday through Friday, eight to four. And half the time they don't answer their calls anyway, but they and definitely also, don't work on the weekends. They're also not the best of the best in the business. The best of the best in the business is not going to work for Rocket Mortgage. It's more people that are like straight out of college, whatever. But 
the people that have the experience that can help you look at your financial picture and say, this is how to bring it down. They're not working for Rock Hip Mortgage. And I, I almost feel more strongly about this than I do the real estate agent. So if you want to go with a Redfin agent that gets a certain commission point, I think in certain situations, there can be value to that. But I, on the lending side, which I have no skin in the game for that, I feel strongly about it. If you are new to this podcast and you are female, make sure to check out Denver Women Invest. It's denverwomeninvest.com. You don't have to be in Denver. You could be in Colorado Springs. You could be out of state, but it is a networking and a free education club that we do every month online where we have speakers and local investors come in and talk. Please do join us if that sounds interesting to you. We're going to talk about old world bagel. We're also going to treat ourselves to old world bagel when we are done podcasting. <laughs> yeah, it. Uh, we are not unlike Pavlov. I mean, you said the world old world bagel and I can feel salivation going on in my mouth right now. I'm not sure how I feel about saying old world bagel all the time. It's not the easiest thing to say. doesn't matter if you are a snob at all about food or just things in general. Uh, old world bagel has an ugly exterior, but the food is very good. The sandwiches are good. The bagels are good. And I don't know because I don't have this expertise, but supposedly it's the closest thing to a New York bagel that you can get in Colorado Springs. Um, it is in Colorado Springs, as Aaron just said. It's near Circle and I-25. And to her point about the exterior, it's one of my biggest beefs with any good place uh, in Colorado Springs. I'd say half of them happen to be in a strip mall, which is just, to me, not as appealing to go to. But I don't care. We're going to make the trek out to Old World Bagel because it's 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 worth it. Um, yeah, like it, they've got... They got all the trappings of that kind of New York deli bagel shop. It's always uh, busy. Always busy, which is always which is a great sign. It's like thinly sliced cucumbers and onions, uh, great locks, and the bagels are fantastic. They also you can get a bagel there cheaply, so it's a dollar seventy nine just for a bagel. But if you want a bagel and cream cheese, it's three dollars and fifty cents. This is Wednesday. They will be open until four p.m. I know that because I need to wrap up my podcasting so I can go get a bagel, but. We really like this place. It's good. And it's over by Tinseltown um, on the south side of town. Yeah, enough said. We'll see you there in a few minutes. Goodbye. All right, everyone. That was our show for today. Thanks for tuning in. We're at Aaron and James Real Estate.com. If you have questions about buying, selling, investing, house hacking, we are happy to field any of those. Find us on Facebook, YouTube. Leave us a five star review on iTunes or the podcast app of your choice. Thank you.